For the government agency in Nebraska see Court of Industrial Relations Nebraska. The Commission on Industrial Relations also known as the Walsh Commission was a commission created by the U.S. Congress on August 23, 1912 to scrutinize U.S. labor law. The Commission studied work conditions throughout the industrial United States between 1913 and 1915. The final report of the Commission, published in 11 volumes in 1916, contained tens of thousands of pages of testimony from a wide range of witnesses, including Clarence Darrow, Louis Brandeis, Mary Harris, Mother Jones, Theodore Schroeder, William. Big Bill Hayward, scores of ordinary workers, and the titans of capitalism, including Daniel Guggenheim, George Walbridge Perkins Sr. of U.S. Steel, Henry Ford, and Andrew Carnegie. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Predecessors. In 1871, there was a failed attempt to create an industrial commission. There was also the Hewitt Committee hearings of 1878–79, the three-year study of the Blair Committee which ended in 1886, and a probe conducted from 1898–1902 by the United States Industrial Commission, appointed by President William McKinley. Topic Origins. In 1910, two leaders of the Structural Iron Workers Union, the McNamara brothers, dynamited the Los Angeles Times Building, killing 20 people. There was public outcry as a result, and President William Howard Taft proposed the creation of a nine-person investigative committee called the Commission on Industrial Relations, which was approved by Congress to be formally created April 23, 1912. Its findings were filed April 23, 1915. The Commission on Industrial Relations got its name from a petition presented to President Taft on December 30, 1911, entitled, "'Petition to the President for a Federal Commission on Industrial Relations' Signed by 28 prominent people, members of the Committee on Standards of Living and Labor of the National Conference of Charities and Corrections, many of whom were associated with Survey Magazine, such as Paul Underwood Kellogg and John A. Fitch. Topic commission members The commission was made up of nine commissioners, all nominated by the President and confirmed by the U.S. Senate. All but one served from beginning to end. The original nine commissioners were, Chairman Frank P. Walsh, Kansas City, Missouri labor lawyer and activist who once told a friend I hate like hell to be respectable, James O'Connell, of the American Federation of Labor AFL, Austin B. Garretson, of the Order of Railway Conductors John Brown Lennon, of the AFL Frederick A. Delano, President of the Wabash Railroad and uncle of Franklin Roosevelt Florence Jaffray Harry a New York socialite and social activist Harris Weinstock, a progressive California businessman S. Thruston Ballard, a Kentucky Democratic flour mill owner shortly before the Commission's final report, Commissioner Delano resigned, and was replaced by Richard Eichton, vice president of the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad. Among the Commission staff were John R. Commons, a labor economist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and Luke Grant, a labor journalist and editor of the Chicago Inter-Ocean. Only one of Grant's reports on the structural ironworkers' bombing campaign was actually published by The Circle. However, an explosive report by Grant Violence in Labor Disputes and Methods of Policing Industry was never published and is only available in draft form from the National Archives and Wisconsin Historical Society. 
Congress had authorized the commission shortly before the 1912 presidential election, in which incumbent President Taft was defeated by New Jersey Governor Woodrow Wilson. Four commissioners ultimately confirmed were originally named by President Taft in December 1912, one month after his defeat, Commissioners Delano, O'Connell, Garretson and Lennon. Taft also nominated five other persons, but the Senate failed to confirm them. Those failed nominees were U.S. Senator George Sutherland of Utah who was Taft's proposed chairman, Connecticut State Legislator George B. Chandler American Book Co., Charles S. Barrett Farmers Union, Adolph Lewison investment banker, copper magnate, and philanthropist, and F. C. Schwetman electrical engineer. Two months after entering the White House, President Wilson nominated replacements for Taft's five failed nominees. Investigation The Commission's responsibilities were to inquire into the general condition of labor in the principal industries of the United States, including agriculture, and especially in those which are carried on in corporate forms, into the growth of associations of employers and of wage earners and the effect of such associations upon the relations between employers and employees. The Commission held 154 days of hearings. Walsh's leadership of the Commission attracted media attention and publicity. Some of the Commission findings included The Commission found that lumber workers in the Northwest labored at their jobs for 10 hours a day at only 20 cents an hour. Seasonal unemployment affected tens of thousands of people in Pacific Coast cities. Only the fortunate averaged more than a meal a day. In California, migrant laborers work in fields with temperatures up to 105 degrees on farms where growers refuse to supply them water in the fields. One Patterson, New Jersey, silk mill fined workers 50 cents for talking and 50 cents for laughing while at work. In an era of Muckraking, the Commission raised the technique to an unprecedented height. The Commission studied several major strikes which occurred during its investigations, including the Patterson, New Jersey, Silk Mill Strike, 1911 to 1913, led by the Industrial Workers of the World. New York City Garment Workers Strike, 1909-1910. Illinois Central and Harriman Lines struggles with the railroad shopmen 1911 to 1915 The Colorado Fuel and Iron Company strike where the Ludlow massacre occurred 1913-1914 when Walsh embarrassed President Wilson and suggested investigating the southern states US Senator Hoke Smith of Georgia attempted to cut Walsh's budget 75% the vote failed, and Walsh promptly sent investigators to Smith's state, making lasting and powerful enemies. Journalist Walter Lippmann stated there was an atmosphere of no quarter when Walsh subpoenaed and then questioned John D. Rockefeller Jr. about the Ludlow massacre. For three days, Walsh publicly chastised Rockefeller. Historian Montgomery stated that the commission found repression by police, judicial, and military agencies, which envisaged themselves as the defenders of society's good people, and in each case but Philadelphia, where the public as a whole was irate over the general conduct of the transit company, that good people in turn endorsed the repression. Small wonder that in all these strikes, and above all in the sanguinary three-year conflict on the Illinois Central Railroad, workers simply took the law into their own hands. <laughs> Commission conclusions 
Unable to agree on many points, the Commission published three different final reports. One of the reports primarily written by Commissioner Commons, with Commissioner Harriman was signed by a bare majority of five commissioners. Instead of calling for industrial democracy, the Commons report instead advocated the creation of impartial labor boards. It did not characterize conflict between labor and management as an inevitable and permanent condition. Commons report expressed fear that the Commission's report would throw the labor movement into politics. The report signed by Chairman Walsh and Commissioners Lennon, O'Connell and Garretson, written by attorney Basil Manley, was much more provocative and accusatory in its tone and conclusions. Its centerpiece was a call for industrial democracy and Henry George's single tax on land values. That report explained the conditions of agricultural estates. It is industrial feudalism in an extreme form. Such estates are, as a rule, the property of absentee landlords, who are for the most part millionaires, resident in the eastern states or in Europe. Regarding conditions in company towns, the Manley Report observed that they displayed every aspect of feudalism except the recognition of special duties on the part of the employer." A separate supplemental statement joined only by Commissioners Lennon and McConnell opposed the creation of an agency-administered system of mediation and arbitration, in favor of strengthening trade unions and employer associations. Their statement concluded, where labor organization is lacking, dangerous discontent is found on every hand, low wages and long hours prevail, exploitation in every direction is practiced, the people become sullen, have no regard for law and government, and are, in reality, a latent volcano, as dangerous to society as are the volcanoes of nature to the landscape surrounding them. We hold that efforts to stay the organization of labor or to restrict the right of employees to organize should not be tolerated, but that the opposite policy should prevail, and the organization of the trade unions and of the employers' organizations should be promoted. This country is no longer a field for slavery, and where men and women are compelled, in order that they may live, to work under conditions in determining which they have no voice, they are not far removed from a condition existing under feudalism or slavery. <laughs> Public response The New Republic observed that the Commission had gone well beyond its duties to investigate the cause and cure of labor unrest. In promoting industrial democracy, it offered a tonic for American democracy itself. The Seattle Union Record exclaimed that the report was an indictment against organized capital. The journal The Masses stated the report signaled the beginning of an indigenous American revolutionary movement, others criticized the report. The New York Herald characterized the commission's president as a Mother Jones in trousers. In 1916, Republican presidential candidate Charles Evans Hughes called the commission, one of the tragic incidents of the present administration, which had accomplished nothing. The president of the Pittsburgh Employers Association stated publicly that Walsh should be assassinated. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Long-term influence. The influence the report had on US politics is debated. Historian Adams argues and historian Gallimbos agrees that the Commission's hearings and reports influenced the passage of such labor legislation as the Adamson Eight-Hour Act. 
Historian Rayback explains that the Commission's report influenced the decisions of the War Labor Board and the authors of New Deal labor legislation. Historian Montgomery states. The uniqueness of the efforts of the Commission on Industrial Relations between 1913 and 1915 lay in its staff of Wisconsin trained experts and in the steadfast refusal of its nine members to allow any diversion of their attention from immediate problems of industrial relations. These very qualities paradoxically imparted to the Commission a political significance greater than that of all previous investigations combined, for out of its work emerged both a labor program for the Democratic Party in 1916 which shattered the narrow limits of its 1912 platform and, through the minority report of John R. Commons and Mrs. J. Borden Harriman, a series of of proposals that were to become widely infused into the welfare capitalism of the 1920s. On the other hand, historian Harter argues that the Commission had been established to determine the roots of labor problems, but its liberal leanings caused Congress to ignore its findings. Historian Brooks, reviewing Adams' book, contends that despite the fact that Frank P. Walsh later became co chairman, with William Howard Taft, of the War Labor Board during World War I, that it is an exaggeration to assume that the Commission was the principal, or even a major, cause of subsequent developments and to attribute to it, as Adams does, the development of a more steeply graduated tax structure, promotion of collective bargaining, minimum wage scales, and the eight-hour day, there is nothing in Adam's book which would support the view that the Commission ever had the importance of the La Follette or McClellan committees. See also U.S. labor law <laughs> Notes <laughs> <laughs>